is Dennis Brown with TKR Studio and welcome to 5-Minute Photoshop. In the previous lesson I showed you how to get pictures from your camera's memory card into the computer. We illustrated doing that using a card reader, plugging the camera's memory card into a card reader and then plugging the card reader into the computer. I also mentioned that alternatively you can plug the camera directly into your computer using the cable that came with your camera. Many newer cameras now have wireless capability where you can transfer images from the camera to the computer without using any cables at all. That's a very cool thing and I expect we'll be seeing a lot more of that in the future. I also wanted to briefly mention that within Adobe Bridge there's a function under the file menu get photos from camera. This allows you to import images either directly from the camera or from a card reader into your hard drive without having to use the Windows Explorer as we did in the previous lesson. Likewise, the Elements Organizer has a function under File, under Get Photos and Videos, from Camera or Card Reader. And that also lets you get those pictures from a device, whether it's a camera or a card reader, into your computer's hard drive. I want to emphasize a key difference between the Organizer and Adobe Bridge. First of all, you'll notice that in this 2013 0502 folder that we created in the previous lesson, we have our three bird images that came from the memory card. To illustrate the point, I'm going to go into Windows Explorer and I'm going to put another image file into that 2013-0502 folder. Now I've got the three birds and a martini glass image. Back in Bridge, we'll see that the martini glass automatically appears. I did not have to tell Bridge to import that image. Bridge will see whatever files and images are in your folders without them having to be imported. Not so with Elements Organizer. Here's that same folder in the Elements Organizer and you'll see the martini glass is not there even though we know it actually exists on the hard drive. As I showed in the previous lesson, what you need to do is right click on the folder and select import media and then it gets the image and there it is. If I go back into that 2013-05-02 folder now the martini glass is there. So that's a key difference between the bridge and the organizer. I'm not really fond of that feature, if you want to call it that, in the elements organizer. Uh, the fact that you have to explicitly import images, although it does have some advantages, which I, I'll be discussing in future lessons. For now, I want to go back to bridge and talk about the way I've got my folders organized on my hard drive. On the left, as we saw, we've got the folder hierarchy and this exactly reflects the way my folders and files are laid out or organized on my hard drive. And you'll see that folder names have underscore characters in front of them. Some of them do and then some don't. The reason for that is when you place an underscore character at the beginning of a folder name or a file name for that matter, then that name will appear above any words that don't have the underscore character in them. So that's why underscore T appears above animals. These are sorted alphabetically or al alphanumerically, but those underscore characters cause all of these folders to appear above all of these. And similarly, if you do a double underscore, then those double underscore words will appear above the single underscores. And I've even got some triple underscore names up here. The reason I do it this way is to move the most frequently used folders to the top of the list. It's the way I prefer to work. I've been doing this, doing it this way for years. From time to time, I'll reorganize. Some folders may not be as important to me anymore or less frequently used and I can just rename them removing underscore characters to move them down the list. I'm not saying this is the best way 
to organize folders. It's just the way that I've been doing it for years and I'm comfortable with it. We'll talk about other features of, of the Adobe Bridge in future lessons and also the Elements Organizer. But that's it for this lesson and thanks for stopping by and hope to see you next time.